oh, this is a big room. I can definitely accommodate most of my company in here. Thanks for showing up. I think it warmed up the place. It's kind of really freezing backstage, so all you guys helps. So um, mainframes. So I'm here to announce, um, as James talked about, the Infosys mainframe migration practice on AWS. Why is this um, really exciting? Uh, as James said, there are a lot of companies, actually there are still a lot of companies who are, who are still uh, running these systems, have been running them for 30 plus years. They've done a great job, still do a great job. But why do we want to move off this? Because there are these challenges, significant challenges with these machines, right? Escalating costs. So just to kind of give you an idea, the way you measure these mainframes is this thing called MIPS, right? So they are about, conservatively, about 30 million MIPS still running out there. And what that translates to typically is about 100 plus billion dollars of cost every year. I think that's a conservative number. Right? And these costs are going up. More data is coming in. These mainframes, which are typically designed to do batch kind of operations, people now want online access to that, and so on. Lack of agility. Right? These companies, now the business wants to move at a much more rapid pace than what these systems were designed to do. Right? So it kind of prevents you from doing that. And last but not the least, skill shortage. These mainframe programmers are not getting any younger. We're not producing more of them. It's like my daughter. When I asked her, what, did, what does she think COBOL is? She thought it was some exotic stone because it sounds like COBOL, right? So this is a problem. And this is really what we are trying to uh, do as part of this uh, migration practice that uh, we're launching on AWS. So kind of think about it in three, uh, three ways, what, what this can do for you. It's kind of a journey, and uh, different people might do this at different pace. But broadly, you can actually really take the whole application, a COBOL application, a JCL, and actually move it onto AWS on a, on a kind of an emulation kind of software. You need to still make changes, because you still leave the mainframe behind. So if you're running on a mainframe database, like uh, that obviously doesn't run on AWS. You have to change that to use a relational database like RDS. You might have to change how security, security works. You might have to change how backup works. Right? But this thing actually works. And you can actually have a saving up to 30 35% by just doing this. The next, next kind of things you can work on is essentially take pieces of the mainframe pieces that you feel actually you want to evolve much faster than others. That's coming in your way to actually evolve things at the pace that you want to evolve them. And put them in a brand new fashion, write a cloud native code onto AWS, and then make them talk to each other through the API gateways on AWS. Right? That kind of addresses somewhat the agility challenge. And finally, you kind of go all the way down. You're going to rewrite the whole system. right? in cloud-native format, right? Yeah, that takes much longer, but that's where I really want to get to. So this sounds great, but what is the problem, right? Why, why haven't people been doing this? Because it, this is really, really hard, right? These are very, very large systems, right, have been built over 30 years. It's not unreasonable to think a system that is 10 million lines of code, 30 million lines of code. And guess what? No documentation, right? So how do you do this? And this is really where uh, the practice that we are launching really kind of shines. Just kind of a very brief overview of this. Don't have a lot of time. But the intent really is to actually use software to amplify the people who are the experts, right? Like an Iron Man suit in some sense. And this is not kind of the traditional software that it actually has a lot of AI pieces in it. Uh, we have a technology called Infosys Mana that, think of it as, looks at the piece of code and can actually discover a lot of interesting things about it. Obviously, the code structures, what the code does, business rules to some extent, 
But where, where are the various pieces of the code that are, have tight dependencies on each other? What does it make sense to actually break apart? What does it make sense to actually leave behind because it's no longer being used? So long story short, take this piece of software, run it on the code that you have, and what comes out really is, is like an assessment, right? An assessment that actually a machine can actually make meaning out of. And you do that to actually then make a very, very kind of objective assessment of how you should do the migration, right? And that's fundamentally is what customers are looking for. They want predictability. They want to know that how complex this is going to be, how long it's going to take, right? And what is the right way to get there? Where do you start? Do you rehost? Do you migrate? Do you do a combination and so on, right? So that's really what the practice is. Um, again, a lot of details. I encourage you to go look it up. So what I had there actually was a set of customers who have begun, uh, thank you, who have begun this journey for us, so very exciting. I encourage you guys to actually uh, come take a look, join us, because this is really happening, and uh, you want to be part of this. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>